Life as a monster has given me many surprises. I was born with the purpose of scaring the children of Willowsburg, and my gods, was my work fun. Every Halloween, I'd hide out in some crevice, sewer, or somewhere abandoned, and as secluded trick-or-treaters wandered by, I'd pop out and utter a loud, BEASTLY ROAR! Every time, it scared the lights out of them, and I felt great. Then, rumors of my existence spread. Suddenly, my presence wasn't met with terror, but amusement. Boys and girls started searching me out, and in my attempts to avoid them, Halloween would pass, and November would come. I wasn't so happy then, but when I was turned into a local celebrity by the police, my life spiraled into a rage-filled nightmare. Ow. That Halloween, the bosses had me take their children out trick-or-treating. Trick-or-treat! Trick or treat. Oh, aren't you three adorable? The woman said. She wore a t-shirt with my image plastered on it. And you got your grasso with you too? She uttered a quiet, ah! mock scream. Then the children left, <laughs> at the twelve house in a row. I wanted to lie down and sleep. Hope you all have a nice night! She passed the candy around before looking at me. She chuckled under her breath. <laughs> Especially you! Then she closed the door. We left her house, her cat playing stupid jingles as I walked past it, and continued traveling through the neighborhood. Houses were loaded with scenes of human gore, bathed in garish colors, as screaming women and bizarre laughs came from inside. Others were completely dark. In other words, the perfect suburbia. Beyond the neighborhood was a hill, on top of which resided a large house. Constructed in two months, it was painted white and lit up like a star. Packs of kids walked towards it throughout the night. Corpses, witches, and other humans strolled past us, some adults with them, who gave me all sorts of looks. Surprise, indifference, happiness. I wanted to roar at a man who looked terrified of me, but I couldn't muster the energy. Damn, my back's getting full! Mark said, walking in front. He was dressed like a blonde guy with armor and a hammer. Nine's been full since the Four of House, Jerry said, jiggling his bag. He wore a white coat. Your bag always gets full, Carrie said. She wore a bloody dress and had pale skin. My parents won't buy bigger bags. Which got Mark chuckling. That's not funny. Mr. Grazo, tell Jerry's parents to let him eat more candy. Okay, I muttered. Where are we going next, friends? Ooh, what about that haunted house over there? Carrie pointed at what appeared to be a recreation of my first known sighting. A derelict farmhouse. No, not there, I said, wishing to keep my memories clean. Come on, don't be so boring. Yeah, I'm tired of visiting these houses. Let's go somewhere fun! For him and Gary pushed me towards the attraction. Don't force him, guys, Jerry said. Gary stopped and sighed. Jerry, you're such a buzzkill. I've had enough fun, but we haven't, Mark said, putting his arm around Jerry's shoulder. So let's all go to one more place that's actually exciting and not another damn house. He suddenly blinked before looking at me. Wait, are you a guy or a girl? Neither. Mark's eyes widened with surprise. Let us go to the hill house and call it a night. Okay? Please? The three Yay! broke into shouts of glee. Yay, that works! Soon I was dragged towards the hill. As we hiked up the stairs, it became noticeably darker. Silhouettes of trees hung above us as two robots rushed past, grinning. They carried giant candy bars. You think they'll like my costume? Nah, but they'll give you candy anyway, Mark said, patting Jerry on the shoulder. By the time we reached the top, Mark and Jerry were panting beside me. Carrie, however, was already at the door, ringing the doorbell twice. A lanky man wearing a football jacket came to greet her. The house's inside was heavenly bright. 
Trick or treat! Ha! Children! Greetings! He looked at me and grinned. Good evening to you, Yagrazo. Hi. Now, what might your names be? I'm Carrie, and these are my friends Mark and Jerry. She said, matching his grin. The man nodded before looking down at his hands. Oh dear, I must have forgotten the candy. He chuckled nervously, <laughs> peering behind us. Uh, say, how about you kids follow me inside? The children looked at each other. Jerry nodded eagerly, while Carrie's grin waned. Can't you get it? Don't be such a wuss, Carrie. He's cool! Mark said. But then he turned to me. Right, Mr. Uglazo? Sure, I said, glancing at the trees. I'm not comfortable- Carrie tried to say, only for Mark to grab her and Jerry's arms. All right, mister, lead the way, he said, dragging his friends into the house. The man glanced at their direction and started snickering to himself. <laughs> What's so funny? I asked. He locked eyes with me and smiled. Then he gently brushed his shoulder three times. Code for I'm a monster too. Um, where's all the candy? I watched as the man creeped inside. I watched as his skin grew pale, sickly white. And before I could see any more, the door slammed shut. By dawn, the house was gone, and 30 missing children were blamed on me. I live in the outskirts now, but not willingly. Now kids run in terror when they see me. Scary children. That's all I wanted. But I'm too busy living in fear to enjoy it. The police hunt for me every day. And they'll surely parade my head around town once they find me. Isn't it ironic? My life has spiraled into a rage-filled nightmare!